In this video, we're going to see five important problems that are going to help you understand margin of error, which is a very important SAT topic. So to understand margin of error, imagine you've got a certain class of students and seven students are randomly selected. Now you select these students and you take the average of their heights and that value is 165 centimeters. Now using just this 165 centimeters, you want to estimate the average height of all of the students in the class. Clearly, maybe there are a few students who are very tall and some of them are super, super short, right? So the value that's going to be the average, the real average is probably going to be different than this 165 number. And that's where the concept of the margin of error comes in. Using some advanced math, suppose we find out that the margin of error is five. Now, here's the problem. All, all that you need to know is you take this 165 number, which is your estimate, and you subtract the margin of error from it. So minus five. So that gives you 160. That is the lower bound of your value for the average height of the entire class. Similarly, you take the same number 165 and add this margin of error, which is five to get 170. So you write this as 160 and 170. Now, any number inside this range, including 160 and 170 is said to be a reasonable value. Another SAD word is it's said to be a possible value. So around 165, you're just subtracting and adding five. So now the answer is super easy. They're asking what is a reasonable value for the average height of the entire class? All right. So all you got to do is find a number that's inside this range. So 158 is clearly out. 161 is definitely in. 171 and 175 are out. And that's why 161 is our correct answer. Now you try to solve this problem. Here, you're given the average height of just five students is 162. To try to find the answer, remember the margin of error is eight. So you got to subtract and add and try to find out what is not a reasonable value and post your answer in the comment section. Now let's move on to the next important type of a problem. Now in the second type of the margin of error type of a problem, you might be asked which of these choices has the least or the maximum margin of error. Now the margin of error depends on two important factors. The first is the sample size. Now imagine in a school, you just take three students and try to calculate their average weight and use that to estimate the weight of the entire school. It's going to have some margin of error. Now imagine you take a hundred students, a lot more students and try to calculate their average weight and use that to estimate the weight of the entire school. Clearly, because there's just three students, again, there could be some students with much more weight and some real thin students, right? that would increase the margin of error here. So the margin of error over here, I'm going to write it as M of E margin of error is going to be high when the sample size is low. And when the sample size is very big, the margin of error clearly is going to be lower. Now, the second type of a factor that affects the margin of error is the quality of data. And this is fairly obvious. If you're trying to estimate the average weight of students, clearly you should be measuring the student's weights, not some adult's weights. That's all. So the quality of data means the, the quality, the sample size, the sample population or the type of people who you're weighing should actually be students and not adults or not athletes or not actors. To summarize, sample size being large reduces the margin of error. Quality of data being better also reduces the margin of error. Remember, in other words, your estimate gets better and better if these two factors, if these two conditions are followed. So now let's remember here, you've got 11th grade students and their weight is to be determined, right? So you need students only from the 11th grade. That's the quality of data. If you take students from the entire school, of course, there's going to be some first grade students. Maybe there's going to be some 12th grade students. So their weights are clearly not important. So that's why you're going to cross this out. Similarly, you're going to cross this choice out because it's got the entire school over here. Now we're dealing just with 11th 
grade students. So you've got 40 students and you've got 100 students. Clearly, as the sample size increases over here, the margin of error drops down. And that's why the 100 or choice C is the correct answer. Now you try to solve this problem, very, very similar problem. Remember, as the sample size increases, the margin of error drops down. As the quality of data increases, also the margin of error drops down. Try this problem, post it in the comments, the answer, and we'll move on to the next question. Now, this is a very wordy problem, but you see they're asking the margin of error, and that should be very easy to solve. All you need is you take this 23% of the students, which is your estimate, and your margin of error is given to be 4%. Just simply subtract 4%, you get 19%. Take the estimate of 23% and the margin of error to get 27%. Now put that in a box, right? So the range of reasonable values is 19% to 27%. Now this range has also got another name called the confidence interval, which means that even though you measured or estimated this number, 23%, there's some error. So you subtract four, add four, and th there's a very high degree of confidence. You're very almost confident that the actual answer is somewhere from 19 through 27. Of course, it could be it could be 35% as well, or it could be as low as 5%. There's a very small probability of that happening though. Most of the time, you'll do these experiments and your answer is, your exact answer is gonna be 19, between 19% 19 and 27%. Now let's look at these answers. They're actually asking you, let's look at the question, which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion? You really don't even need to read the problem. 23% of the students are estimated to have done something. 4% is the margin of error. Your confidence interval is 19 through 27. All right. It's unlikely. Look at, let's look at the choices now. It's unlikely that less than 23% of the students, this is confusing. They're not talking anything. They're not really mentioning the confidence interval concept here. At least 23%, but no more than 25. That's out because there's nothing about the 25%. Now let's look at the third choice. The researcher is between 19 and 27% sure that most of the students see a movie at least once a year. So this is not talking about the percentage probability, it's just the range. So that's why this one as well is out. Now let's look at the last one. It is plausible or it's reasonable. This is another SAD word here, right? That the percentage of students who see a movie at least once is between 19 and 27. So the between is a very important word. As soon as you see between, there's a very high chance that this is your answer and it is indeed your answer, right? Again, it's plausible. It's you're not 100% sure. There's only you're fairly confident is going to be here, but there could be some crazy situation happening. And of course, it could be higher or lower than that. Now you try to solve this problem, exact same problem, 40% is your estimate and your margin of error is 10%. So remember, super easy thing that I've shown you, find the confidence interval for the actual estimate of whatever this experiment is about. Post your answer in the comment section and then let's move on to the next question. Now here's a practice problem for you based on some of the ideas that we did before. Remember, the margin of error is lowest for these two situations. The sample size is big, right? If you've got something which is 50 people as com compared to 12 people, then the 50 people will have a lower margin of error. The second factor that affects margin of error is the quality of data. You need to sample or survey the appropriate, the correct type of people to get a better understanding, a better estimate and a lower margin of error. Now, try to solve this problem. Super easy answer. Post your answer in the comment section and let's move on again to the last problem now. Now, pause the video and see if you can solve this actual problem. Here you're given the estimate. Remember, estimate is a keyword here. You're given the estimate to be 15% and then you're given the margin of error to be 2%. So the confidence interval is just going to be 15 minus 2, which is 13% and on the lower side and on the higher side, it's going to be 15 plus 2, which is 17%. But here we nowhere see these answers. Remember, you're given this value over here, which is 10,000 beads. So what is 13% of 10,000? That's right. It's 1300 over here. Now for 17% of 17% of 10,000, that's going to be 1700. So the 
actual number of beads, which is again, here's the SAT word most plausible or most reasonable is going to be between 1300 and 1700, which is why B is your correct answer is just an algebraic restatement of the same fact. It's between or greater than 1300 and less than 1700. Now you try this very similar problem here. You have just got 40,000 beads instead of 10,000 earlier. And the percent of red beads that's estimated, it's 20% and the actual margin of error is 5% over here. So use the calculations that we did before and write down your confidence interval Post it in the comments below and work on this problem. So to summarize, we saw the five very important margin of error problems that the SAT might ask you. The first one is just to calculate this reasonable or plausible range of values, also called the confidence interval. You just subtract or add the margin of error from the actual estimate. Then the next one, we saw the two factors that affect the margin of error. If you want the margin of error to be the least, you need to have the biggest sample data, sample size, and the best quality of data. Then we saw the problem over here of the same type where we estimated the sample size to be the biggest would have the least margin of error. And of course, the quality of data also should be very relevant. Same problem here. We just add and subtract the confidence interval from a real SAT problem to find the answer. Again, here, we just compare these values of margin of error and decide if the sample size is bigger or smaller. That's the hint for you. And finally, here, a quick twist on the confidence interval. You just find the confidence interval in terms of percents and multiply by the final, the total beads to get your answer. All right. Hopefully you like this topic on margin of errors and look forward to my other videos on this channel and also post your answers on each of these questions so that you can retain all of these concepts. Wish you the best and talk to you very soon.